Welcome back to Travel Snacks. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm Allison Sharp, and this is Travel Snacks. So, welcome to everybody that's here. Uh, let me get my glasses on. Don't be too shocked. Some of you are probably like, oh my gosh, you got your hair done. I know, it's a big deal. Can you believe my hair is like actually looking good? For, since the longest time, I, I just can't even. I feel like a whole new person. You're probably like, I don't even recognize this person. And I don't even recognize myself because getting your hair done makes a huge difference. I mean, to me it does. And so I finally, well, I haven't done, styled it, but I finally got my hair done the other day and the girl did an amazing job. I mean, usually my hair takes like four hours or more whenever I highlight my hair. Um, but this time, this girl, she was awesome. And she did my hair a full highlight in three hours and 45 minutes. Because uh, my hair is long, so it takes a long time. And so I was just like, definitely going back to this girl. Um, and it's it was a great experience. So anyways, that was a whole side tangent. but. Uh, hello Monique and Rebecca and Jeff and Grant's in the house. Grant is our moderator. Thank you Grant for being here and moderating. Hey Deb G. Ooh, Deb G's made it on the beginning. Uh, hey Reverend RV and Lance. Thank you Reverend RV. Thank you. Um, thank you. Where's my chicken? Thank you very much. Hey Matt. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey Matt. Matthew. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I told her to go like way more blonde because um, you know, I was doing like the lived in blonde look and I was feeling a little too lived in, you know what I mean? I was feeling like I was looking a little rough, you know, and now that I've been losing weight, I just wanted to, like my hair to match my attitude, my personality. And I just wanted it to brighten up my life. And I just said, let's just go as blonde as possible. And I have a bunch of gray hairs right here in my part and on the sides. And so to like camouflage that instead of doing like a like a, a brown root uh, cover up, she just blended in a bunch of blondes. So it kind of just like, you know, kind of blends in with because gray hair is not really gray. It's like silver or white. Uh, so if you put blonde in there, it doesn't show up as much. So that's just like a little trick. Uh, but yeah, so it definitely brightens up my mood. Hey, quirky girl. Hey, Flubber Lane. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mark and Judith. How are you? Hey, Thomas. How are you? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Silver and Foxy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so it has been an interesting, interesting week. Um, I usually like to go live, you know, more than once a week. Um, I had been on a roll there for a while, um, coming on and doing these lives, you know, a few times a week. Um, but the past two weeks has just been like so crazy and um, I'm gonna get into it in just a second but the main thing is because of my van just like I feel I feel like bad for Simon because he's just been sick uh, so I'll talk about that in just a second um, Deb G yes thank you thank you thank you thank you guys for being here oh let me change it to live chat instead of top chat so I can see all the messages. Um, if there's any questions that you guys have, feel free to ask. If there's anything I miss, Grant's been around for a long time and he'll be able to answer most questions. And if we have any crazy people that come in, trolls or something, um, and he can put them in a timeout. Uh, so anyways, I'm actually wearing a dress today because I went to church. Um, and that's another thing that I haven't done in a while. Um, is gone to church because it seems like just the days are just going so quickly and I was like okay you need to make a priority out of going to church so uh, I went to church today and it was awesome and now I'm parked at the bay and I'll show you guys that in a little bit um, it's like a mini field trip if you will because I'll just be basically showing you outside um, and it's directly across the street from SeaWorld, so you should be able to see some of the things over at SeaWorld when I show you. Um, so yeah, so today's just been a great day. Went to church, went and got a little bit of groceries, um, and got some ice. 
uh, because I was lacking in the ice department and I like to stay hydrated with my water and this water bottle makes such a huge difference when you put ice in it it lasts like 24 hours and it just stays cold and it makes such a difference of me wanting to drink water I didn't really real really realize what a bigger deal it was uh, to have like cold water as opposed to just like you know lukewarm water like, I don't know why I didn't think that was a big deal whatever but it really makes a big difference all right so if you guys are already here make sure you throw a like on this live stream uh, that gives YouTube um, like a thumbs up that you guys like the live streams and that's great um, <laughs> Reverend Harvey losing weight and coloring the hair signs of a woman on the hunt hey I'm not the one doing the hunting but I'm gonna be uh, available you know what I'm saying I'll be you know officially available for anybody that sounded really bad like I'm gonna be like going into some kind of like video situation of that sort no no that didn't come out right but you know what I'm saying I'm just getting myself together so I feel better and yeah Simon has been spending a lot of time in the hospital yes um, so basically I have had so many ups and downs the past week week and a half actually longer ever since I came back from Idaho um, just with like family issues and just like just a lot of just it's a whole lot of things but on top of that my van has been doing some weird things um, and then the brakes were out of service um, like the rotors and stuff like the steering wheel was shaking and just some like weird odd things happening with the van um, and I went to a mechanic and I thought it was repaired but it wasn't repaired but I paid money and it's been like a whole issue so I finally found a mechanic um, and I've been talking to um, like I've been telling more of the story on patreon so if you're not already a patreon member feel free to join um, it's a great little community we have over there and I share more of like an up-to-date um, you know daily or every other day of what's kind of happening on the journey um, in between making videos and stuff um, but I've been sharing on there just like some of the stuff that's been happening um, but basically I, I did find a new mechanic out here in the San Diego area and they are so nice and so knowledgeable and they have been like treating me really well but the cost is still expensive to get repairs done um, so and it's really difficult because you know this is my home my van is my home so when when they have to keep it for a full day I have to go find something to do or go find somewhere to sit because you know I can't just be in my van which means I also need to figure out how I'm gonna eat and I'm trying not to eat out but if I don't have my van then I can't cook in my van so uh, it's just been kind of like kind of a little bit of a bummer uh, to not know what days I'm gonna have the van um, long story short two things have been repaired so far well like one and a half things but after they've done a lot of testing and diagnostics and um, just I don't know just digging deeper they found out that I'm gonna probably need to get a brand new fuel tank like the actual gas tank I never heard of such a thing but um, I think they they said that they need to just like replace it but the problem is that my van is like 20 years old and they only made this certain style of gas tank for like two years and it's just like a whole thing so they've been calling around to junkyards and you know when you they haven't found one but if they do find one they gotta like inspect it to make sure there's no leaks and make sure it's in good working condition and so far he's called around and he hasn't been able to find one um so that's very costly you know and then there's a bunch of other things on the van that as they were inspecting they found out um all these different things and they've taken pictures and you know explained it to me and showed me the different things and some of the things are a little bit more urgent or more like dangerous i guess than other things um, and so at first you know uh, this first set of um, this first appointment I had uh, a little a little bit of something fixed and then I had my brakes redone my brand new rotors and pads 
um, which that would that was expensive so just right now I've already spent twelve hundred dollars on that um, but all these other things they gave me an estimate and um, I don't even if they're done giving me an estimate that doesn't even include like the new gas tank it's basically gonna cost me closer to four thousand dollars after all is said and done um, some of the things I guess I could wait on but for peace of mind um, some of the things it's like makes me feel a little bit a little bit nervous like I think I need a new um, new wheel bearing uh, my rack and pinion I don't even know what that is like a steering situation there's like oil leak um, some other things that I don't even remember but it was just like a long list of things that were like a little bit more pressing um, brake fluid flush or something it was just like a lot of things and so I was like okay well I've saved money to the side for this but at the same time you know uh, it's just still a lot of money it's still a lot of money to like to be shelling out you know what I mean um, so even though I'm prepared for it it's like one of those things where it's like now that I got to spend it I'm like oh no so I've been like having like emotionally just like ups and downs because I'm like really standing firm on like God provides like that's actually like what I always think about is like God provides God's never left me God has always been there for me he's always um, taking care of everything I've never had to like worry about anything even if like my money is super low God's always been there you know if that something breaks God's always been there so I do know that like logically and I hold on to that but it's still just like an emotional thing to go through just like not knowing what to do um, you know because I have to make decisions on if I'm gonna get this stuff fixed right now or should I wait a little bit and save some more money it's just like a lot of different things and you know it's just like very it can be very difficult and so I just really had to like take a few days and like not talk to anybody <laughs> because after I found out all this stuff about how much it's gonna cost it just like kind of brought me down like in my mood and like I know that when you go through troubling times is when you're supposed to rejoice so I was like feeling guilty that I wasn't rejoicing but also I was like I'm just a human I'm having human emotions um, so I've kind of at this point today I've kind of reached like this level of acceptance and that's why I, I titled this um, I've come to accept the things I can't change and these are things that I can't change and I just feel I also feel blessed that I had it like my previous self was thoughtful enough to save the money aside so that I do have this money because I was just like praying for other people that are in bad situations that don't have other options and just that I still have food and I still have a shelter I still have friends and family and I just had to get to like a place of acceptance and gratitude and knowing that this is also a testament to like you can get through hard things and I know that when I used to live in my car when I first started my journey I was a lot more um, like carefree and a lot more everything's gonna work out and I truly believed it I still do believe it um, but somehow over the last couple years you know things just chip at you you know um, challenges chip you down a little bit and I just had to remember that just because I've been like beaten up a little bit doesn't mean that I'm down for the count and I just have to like had to come to that acceptance and just change my mood change my attitude like that life is still great life is still beautiful and like after, when I show you where I'm at I'm able to like during the days you know park next to oceans and bays and lakes and stuff like that and I'm still able to have the freedom to do the things that you know for the most part I want to do I still work very hard you know editing and making videos and stuff but I still have so many things and I have the snack pack and I have the you know the ability to like come on and talk with you guys and share this journey with you guys um, so I feel kind of like in a better spot like a, in a better feeling of acceptance and um, I think taking those couple days off to just like pray and think it really did help you know to just like calm down slow down 
And just remember that everything's okay. Like, everything's going to be okay. You know? Everything's going to be okay. Uh, so, let me read some of these. <laughs> Thomas, Simon might need to get tested for VanVid. I mean, maybe. What if that was a thing? Yes. Oh, thank you, Grant, for posting that link. Hey, Scotty Digital, how are you? Hey, Mary's, lo Mary's Love. Uh, yes, my van is broken. It's still running, but it's broken. I just came, so I have no idea what to show. But yes, the van is having some mechanical issues. I can still drive it. Um, I do have brand new brakes, so that's like makes me feel like a billion times better. Uh, so now the steering wheel is not shaking when I drive, so that, that already feels better. Um, and then I know as some of these other things get fixed, it's going to just even improve better. Uh, yes, Jehovah Jireh, yes. Uh, concerts, coasters, and nitro. Um, oh, Grant already answered that. 2003 Chevy Express Explorer. Uh, yes, Matthew 625, yes. Hey, Luke, I would for sure get a second opinion, a lot of dishonest, but yeah, so um, now that I have the like list after the diagnostics, um, there's a few things that uh, that aren't as pressing that I might just call around and get some like different estimates um, Just because like even if I could save like two hundred dollars three hundred dollars five hundred dollars like collectively on all these things um, Obviously that's money saved, you know what I'm saying? So I am gonna probably call around on some of these other things um, I did go I did actually physically drive around to some of these different mechanics and like went in there and told them all the stuff that's going on prior to me finding this mechanic and this mechanic was the one I felt most comfortable with and that was felt the most knowledgeable and the most honest and had like really great reviews um, on their Google reviews they had like almost 500 five-star reviews um, and they've been really great they've like provided a shuttle like like the other day I didn't have anywhere to go and so I was like can you just drop me off at the beach you know and then I could walk to the library when it opens and then at the end of the day, I just walked to, over to like a restaurant and they came and, you know, they ordered a, a, a lift for me. Um, so they do like shuttles um, for no charge. And um, they've been keeping me up to date, like giving me phone calls and like showing me all the things that are wrong. So I do feel comfortable with this mechanic. Um, but again, you know, it's still expensive. Um, and I, I don't want to like downplay the work that mechanics have to do because I think a lot of times like I do it too and I'm trying not to anymore. But like our first reaction is to always be like, mechanics are so expensive. And it's like, at the same time, like they, that is their job. That is what they do. And they do have to get paid and parts are expensive. Um, so I'm trying not to like be as critical, but there definitely are a lot of shady mechanics and there definitely are people that um, take advantage when you go to get work done. Um, like they'll, you know, sometimes it could just be like a simple part and they'll be like, oh, you got to rebuild this whole thing, you know, and it's like, I'm really trying to stay conscious of that and so like with this thing with the gas tank I do feel like that is probably the right move because the previous mechanic that I used took a part out of it and didn't replace it and so I think because of that there's some like other things that broke um, so it's a whole mess it's a whole mess um, but yeah so I, I am gonna probably get a second opinion on just cost um, and just see because it is it's very expensive and you know, this isn't like very great to have to spend this much money like in one pop because it just like depletes the money that I have. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, just because you got the money, it's still shocking to pay that much. Yes, exactly, Rebecca. Hi, Faithful Montana Patriot. Pa Patriot. How are you? Uh, hey, Don Don, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you so much. Um, my fuel tank, it's a good question. I think, it, I'm just making this up, but I think it's a 30-gallon tank. I, I'm only just guessing because, like, when I fill up my gas tank, I think it goes to, like, 30 or 35 gallons. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. That's something I should probably know. Thank you. Thank you, Scotty Digital. HB, hang in there, Allison. You're inspiring. Thanks for praying for, uh, thanks and praying for you and us all. Did I ever tell you my name? So, oh, thank you, thank you, Hope. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the prayers. Every prayer, I'll take all the prayers. 
um, Lance says, an honest mechanic is like finding a good doctor. It's so true. It's so true. Does the mechanic know that you are an influencer on social media and have lots of followers? Uh, where's my chicken? I thought about saying that or talk about, like they do know that I live in the van because every day, you know, we've had to have talks like, okay, do you think you're going to have the van done tonight? Like, if not, I need to figure out where I'm going to sleep. Like there was only one night so far that I had to sleep at my friend's house. Um, and then the other day, um, I was like, are you guys going to be able to be at a, a stopping point where you can take it off the rack and, you know, let me take it for the night. And that, that one night they were, um, and for this weekend, they were able to take it off of the rack and it just sucks. Cause you know, it's like once they're, they have it lifted and it's up and they have parts out, they don't want to have to keep taking stuff in and out. Um, so they do know that I live in the van. Um, I haven't really said that I'm like an influencer. I don't know if that's going to make a difference, um, but I will say that I've, I've been like thinking about saying something just because, just because like in San Diego, there's lots of van life, like so much, so many vans. I mean, if you come to San Diego, it's illegal to sleep in your car, but there's the most RVs and vans just everywhere. Um, and so there's lots of people that's going to need mechanical work now this shop has already like excellent reviews and they have probably a lot of work already so I don't know that it's gonna make a difference for them like you know what I'm saying like uh, like when when they're already in demand if me shouting them out or talking about their shop is gonna like make a difference for them but I might you know it doesn't hurt to ask right you know like hey I could do like a you know an episode about this experience and like things to look out for and maybe even like ask them some questions and just you know talk about their shop a little bit um you know it might might be something uh to ask about and maybe they would give me a discount of some sort and they're, they're already giving me a triple a discount um but yeah maybe i don't know that's something that's something something i've thought about and something that, something to think about um, oh, thank you, Grant, for posting that. I appreciate it. Thank you for posting those links. Yes, if you'd like to donate to the snack fund, it's never obligated or required or anything. It's a blessing, and I appreciate it. Um, you know, feel free if you'd like to uh, support the journey. But if not, it's totally okay. Don't feel bad about it if you can't. It's totally fine. Um, so glad you're here, Don Don. Thank you, Lori. Um, Scotty Digital. I would love to go to like Lake Tahoe area, which is about eight hours from here. Um, so like once these repairs happen, like I might try to just like get up to that area, Northern California and, you know, just explore a little bit up there. Um, so I do have to stay in Southern California because of an upcoming surgery that I'm having, but um, I would like to get up to that area. How old is your van and how is the rest on the frame? Best of luck, we'll pray for you here in Canada. Vehicles don't last past 15 years. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think there was a couple like rusty things, but I don't know. I don't know. But my van is, um, my van is a 2003. Um, did you ever think of trading it if for class B, if you're able, I dream of class B. You know, I hope I did, I won't, uh, I, I didn't consider it and I probably won't because my dad and I built this together and I love my van. Like I love just the way it's set up and I, the, like just the, um, like just the thought of me and my dad, you know, building this together. It's really special to me. Like this van is really special to me and I have everything in the place that I want it and I'm still like decorating it. And, um, I don't really even want something bigger, you know, it's just me and the van. And getting something bigger, I've I've had friends that have bigger, like Sprinters and um, Promasters and um, just bigger vans, and it's even harder to find parking. You know, even in this van, it's sometimes hard to find parking. To be stealth, it's you know people can look at it and see there's solar panels, there's a Max Air fan, and so I'm teetering on that like stealth look, even though my van is not stealthy. Um, but when you get something even bigger, it's just stands out even more um and i don't need any more space than this it's already like too much to think about with all the stuff here i do feel that once a lot of these things get repaired i will feel a lot more at peace and i'll feel better about it 
you know, the van is like almost 20 years old. And so I have to consider that. It just recently hit 100,000 miles. And so, you know, I don't know what the previous owner did or didn't do. Um, I know the things I've done on the van and I do keep it up in terms of like oil changes and tires and stuff like that. But you know, it's an older van. Like it's like 20 years. It's almost like almost as old as my two kids, like in their twenties. It's so it's like, that's a lot of time to be rolling around. So I put a lot of miles on this van. So I look at it as like paying rent. Nobody likes to pay rent, but these repairs, it's just like paying rent or, you know, if you have repairs on your home, nobody likes to pay it. And it is a shock. It's like, holy crap, like all the things all at once. It just sucks, especially since I've taken it to a mechanic before and had inspections and none of these things came up. And some of these things have been like on here for a while. So it just kind of sucks because I think some of these things could have maybe been pre prevented. And so I'm just kind of like irritated about it but I'm just trying to stay in like a good mood about the whole thing and just like, just be like joyful, you know? And I have like too much to be grateful for to be upset. Um, hey Crystal, how are you? How are you? How are you? Lance says, a good rep in the van life community for a mechanic is gold. Yes. I mean, that's true, Lance. I mean, I might say something and just see what they say. Like, they can only say, no, it's not a big deal. I'm already going to pay for it. So if, you know, I mean, you never know. Hey, Maddie G, how are you? Finally get to come to your live. Yes. I'm at church on Sunday uh, a.m. Sunday p.m., but my friend needed help getting her cows off the road only in Texas tonight I get to be awesome I love it I love it I love it hey Meredith how are you hey Tammy how are you um hey Daya thank you so much uh Scotty Digital at the very least they would make sure the work is done correctly knowing that you have a, a huge following yes definitely like so far they've been I'm trying to get this adjusted correctly um so th so far they've been great but yeah I might just like call tomorrow because um, basically where we're at now is uh, I got the van back on Friday um, and then they told me not to fill the gas tank to only put like enough gas to get around to where I'm going for the weekend because if they do find a gas tank like as soon as they find it they're gonna order it from wherever it is like a junkyard or wherever uh, and then I'll bring it back in and obviously if you're taking out a gas tank you don't want it to be full so basically I only just put five gallons in this morning um, and so you know it's basically like a little less than a quarter of a tank and so I've just been kind of hovering in the same 20 minutes of where I've been hanging out um, and so you know he said he had already started calling around and he couldn't find it he couldn't find one so I'm just like praying if anybody wants to pray this is the prayer praying that we find a gas tank um, that's in good condition and like as soon as he finds one then they'll call me and then I'll bring the van in and they can do the gas tank in one day um, and then some of these other things I'm gonna call around in the meantime um, but yeah so that's where we're at now is I'm just waiting for them to find a gas tank a br like not a brand new one they don't even make this gas tank anymore for this van um, for this year and make or whatever so we're just I'm just waiting until they can find one I mean if they can't find one, then I'm gonna have to like call around to different mechanics and see if they can find one. I don't really know. I mean, that's just like, that's the only thing. I'm just waiting. Yes, it doesn't hurt to ask for sure. Hey, Prayer Squad. No, I'm not selling the van. It's just got needs a lot of repairs. Hey, Ladybug. Yes, it's my tiny home on wheels. Hey, Jeff. Uh, I would definitely give them a shout if I deserved, uh, if deserved. Word of mouth is vital to these mechanics. Yes, okay. I'll definitely, I mean, I don't even mind giving them a shout out just in general. Um, so, but I am going to talk to them and just see, you know, how they would feel about it. Because, you know, like... <sighs> I don't know. I, I'll ask them if they even want to be shouted out. 
Thank you, Meredith. I appreciate that compliment. Oh, that's true. Special memories with your dad and the stealthy thing. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, HB Hope. Um, your van is basically a class B now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Um, please make sure to inspect the frame. Make sure the chassis is solid before you get to attach. To attach, be sure to see, to see your home. It'd be sad to see your home fall apart. Harry must be fluid film undercoat rust protection. Yes. Okay. Good point. Good point. Thank you, Prayer Squad. True, the rent thing, and good to know about parking on the Class Bs. You know, in case I win the lottery. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, it's like, cause I always thought, like, I always thought, okay, this is my starter van. Then I'm gonna go to like a Pro Master, because you know, I, I like love the look of the Pro Master, and it's like gas instead of diesel. And I was like, that's gonna be my next thing. And then as I've been in this lifestyle and seeing other people. A lot of them are like amazing, don't get me wrong, they're beautiful. These vans, like the Sprinters, the Promasters, the Ford Transits, all of them, and they have a lot more room and it's just great, but like the more you have, the more you have to think about and the more, like, just a little more difficult it is for parking and stuff. Um, so, and like even my height of my van, I like if I go through a drive through I need a clearance of nine feet and some of these bigger vans they need a higher clearance so they could never probably go into a drive-through unless it was like I don't even know didn't have like an overhang or something so I don't know I like the height and look of my van um, so yeah it's a drag to have to pay for repairs but then it's all brand new yes exactly hey Paul how are you I'm doing good um, I'm headed uh, Maddie G I'm headed to California in three weeks to visit all my siblings. What's the price of gas these days? I'm going to LA, Ontario, and San Diego. Okay, well, uh, I'm in San Diego and I paid uh, $4.99 a gallon this morning. Um, I'd say you could, like, if you go to Costco, um, I think it's like $4.89, um, but it's hovering around $5.09, $5.19. Of course, there's places that are higher. Um, I don't know what LA is right now. Um, but in like some of the more um, beach areas, they're a little bit more like 550 a gallon. Yes, Lance, the Lord will provide. Thank you, thank you. I love, love, love your channel. Just started watching Nomadic Editor. Awesome, thank you, Prayer Squad. Thank you for being here. My uncle would roll over in his grave if only put five gallons in my tank. He always preached that not filling up burns gas faster. I mean, that's probably true. Like I usually fill my tank, you know, all the way uh, even before the light comes on and all that I used to, I know that sounds funny but I used to wait till the light came on and when I was in my car and my dad used to get on me about it um, but now I don't I always like fill up like if I see a gas station is a good price then I'll just fill it up even if it's like a half a tank um, but yeah the mechanics told me don't fill it up because when they find a gas tank you know they don't want the gas tank to be full my gas tank that's already in here it's nice that they provided you a lift. Imagine, I imagine you wandering around aimlessly while Simon was in the shop. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And this is like where their shop is, is in like kind of more of an industrial area. So it's not like, you know, I could just like sit in there and, or just like walk down the street. Uh, so the first couple times they have a guy that's, you know, that has, they have like a shuttle at the place. Um, and he would just drive me, but then I guess if it's too early in the morning or later if the or if the other guy is working then they just do like a lift and I was like that is so nice I think that's like a great option um, yeah I, uh, Meredith says where's Robbie I haven't seen him in the chat like he yeah I think he's okay um, I haven't heard from him um, very much but I think he's he said he was gonna be working on his channel um, so um, I'm wishing him the best on that um, hey Judy, how are you? I'm going to have to come back and listen tonight. Going to church, awesome, at six. We'll check you out. Okay, awesome, thank you for uh, stopping in. It's the day for church. I found some 338 gas in Stockbridge this weekend. Ooh, I love it. 338, shoot, I wish. Hey, Danette's in the house, what it do DG, Van Life Diaries. Hey, if you guys aren't already, you should be following what it do DG. She's got a great channel as well. Oh, Grant's still sitting at 557 in Canada. In Jersey, 5 
a gallon ain't nothing to sneeze at. Gas is coming down significantly, says Crystal here in South Texas. It was 307. Oh, wow. Well, so I promise not to cry about paying 338. I have to practice having a grateful heart. Yes, I know. Whenever I see like one, like gas that's like under $4, I'm like, okay, I mean, it's still high, but I'm like, okay, I'll take it. First of all, my car ran out of gas the other day. I had no one to help and police couldn't send help. I prayed and God miraculously gave me enough to crank the car and get to a gas station across the street. Papa God, amen, amen, amen. And you just need a little bit, just that little bit of faith got you over to the gas station. Uh, 389 in Pennsylvania, oh dang. Yeah, I, I'm i really hoping that it goes down um, even more. Like, it was closer to $6, uh, so, you know, like, I don't want to get used to saying, well, that's $5 is good or $4 is good because none of it's good. Like, we need it to come back to, like, the twos and threes. That's what I'm talking about. So I don't want to get, like, comfortable being excited about high price gas. But I am still recognizing gratitude for it coming down because that's a big deal. Okay, hold on. I'm getting some alerts here. Oh, Shauna Lawrence just sent $30. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Shauna. Thank you so much. Let me give you a shout out. Let's give you... Oh, let me give you that one. Thank you so much, Shauna. I appreciate it so very much. It is a true, true blessing. And there's another alert here. Oh, holy macaronis. Tammy, shoot, Tammy Schooley sent $100. I'm just going to give you a straight. Thank you so much, Tammy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it very much. Also, a huge blessing, a huge blessing. Thank you, thank you guys for the donations. It's, it truly means a lot, especially during this hard time. Um, but again, don't feel obligated, but I'm just saying it is really a blessing. I appreciate it, so, so nice. Um, yes, God is faithful all the time. Yes, indeed. Oh yes, subscribe, uh, Meredith just subscribed to what it new DG. This inflation recovery law just adds more taxes to America. I don't even know about that. I don't know about that law. I've been staying off the news, like even, I don't even watch the news, but like even, you know, when you go on social media and you just see things that are happening in the news, I'm really trying to like even stay off of social media like more because I already have a lot on my mind. I don't need anything more to bring me down. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to stay close to people that I love and care about and like share like positive messages and inspiring messages to everybody I come across and try to be like a nice person and just be a blessing to other people because too many things are happening in the news. Also, I was listening to a podcast. This is just a side note. I was listening to a podcast that like teenagers and like 20 year olds, like more people are getting Tourette's in that age group because of TikTok and Instagram reels and like, uh, you know, short form content, because I guess like you're continuously being fed like a fast paced, um, like thing of content, you know, and you're hearing like all these songs over and over again and you're hearing the same like, uh, catchphrases and stuff like that. So all these kids and, and 20 year olds and stuff, they're getting Tourette's that their mind can't shut it off. So they're just like saying things and they can't control it. Um, it's not great. It's not great. And like, I've, I had gotten down, gone down that road of TikTok where I was watching like too much at night. Cause like, I like to just wind down and just like watch some TikToks or like watch YouTube when I go to bed or Netflix. And I had found myself just like scrolling and scrolling scrolling and just being like totally like just too involved just mentally just like watching and watching and watching and I was like I gotta get off this so I really 
um, I still watch TikTok sometimes, but I don't watch it nearly as much as I do. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is bad news. Like, this is not great. Because a lot of kids were getting Tourette's. And so basically they were saying like the solution is to get off of it. And like a lot of the kids that got it, um, that developed it, were able to like, as their mind calmed down or as whatever, I don't know how it all works. I guess they had, you know, they were able to like alleviate those um, tics. And uh, like, I just think that is incredibly like <sighs> scary for the younger generation because it's so difficult like as a younger person I mean even like at my age I like to you know be on social media and watch fun things but as like a younger person that's just like still developing and it's like you want to be like in the know with your friends and you want to like know all the trending things and stuff so it's like you're almost like not obligated but you almost feel like you need to be part of what's going on and for them to be getting like all these problems because of it it's just really sad like I don't even know I feel like there's got to be some kind of like I I don't know some like kind of time limit or some kind of I don't even know some regulation about like how long a, a people can be on those things like even like within the app but you know I know that like the answer is not like government getting involved or regulating everything because that sucks but I just don't know the answer but I just feel bad for some of these younger people and I'm very also conscious of the fact that I'm a content creator so I do know that people are trying to make a living on like developing content but I know for me a main thing or a main goal for me is to always provide education or some kind of tip or some kind of positivity or something so that anyone watching my videos will come away with something and you know TikTok is kind of like mindless enjoyment it's just like watching like reality TV so there's nothing against it but at the same time it's like too much of a good thing it can turn real bad it's just it just like is upsetting to think about um hey Glenda how are you there was about seven, 379 liters in a gallon okay a yodel shout out would be epic all right Lance uh, hey, cute Margo. Um, so nice. Yes, thank you, Tammy, again. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the news brings me down. Yeah, the news does bring me down. Hey, Mira Designs, how are you? I know kids' attention spans are getting shorter and shorter due to the two minutes time limit. Yes, exactly. That is exactly why I watch and love you, girl. Find your positives and much as real, honest person. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Prayer Squad. Love Travel Snacks, Cog Hill Farm, Nomadic Introvert, and Ladybug Out on YouTube. Happy content, positive people, my Bible, and positive. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I also love Ladybug Out. I don't know the other two channels, but maybe I'll check those out. Uh, Ladybug Out's channel is great. Um, so that's Jackie's problem. Too much TikTok. Personally, I have no use for TikTok. <laughs> oh, man. A lot, of a lot of the pro wrestling vlogs use what is called humper chats because they get to keep more of the money donated. It's clean, that, though it sounds dirty. Humper chats, I've never heard of such a thing. Is that just like a, like a PayPal type situation? Um, for donations, it's always best like to pay a creator through um, Venmo or Cash App uh, because it's, they don't take any fees. So that's always like a better thing. So maybe that's what Humper chats is like. Uh, Q Margo. It can be addictive scrolling through the short videos. Yes, it definitely can. Uh, Rebecca. Yeah, I ha am have been watching YouTube shorts at bedtime. My mind would not shut off having trouble getting sleep. I have to not watch them anymore then. Yeah, that's how I was too, Rebecca. Just like, you know, because in your mind you think, okay, this is just going to wind me down, but it actually is triggering your brain with dopamine. And so every flick is a hit. And so it's constant, like, it's almost like getting... A little dose of sugar or like happiness it's like oh that's new oh that's new oh my gosh that's new that's fun oh my gosh that's fun oh I hate that oh that person sucks or your mind is constantly going up and down because you're ju you're forming an opinion or a judgment after each flick and your mind is constantly thinking it is mindless but it's also not mindless because you're 
continuously going and just having this the screen the light in your eyes and your face it's also keeping you awake and so until you just get to the point where you're just exhausted um, so it's actually really really bad and I'm not the one to judge because I've definitely been doing it so but the more we can all like kind of like bring it down a little bit I think the better for all of our health because it's just like it's like kind of like just doing drugs you know what I mean like just mentally your brain is getting a little worse um, so many shorts are meaningless I don't watch a lot of YouTube shorts I watch mostly TikToks or Instagram reels but I do watch some YouTube shorts and some of them are funny um, but yeah some of them are are basic I think one of the things with the shorts on YouTube is that YouTube's really pushing shorts for creators they're pushing it like really strong uh, for creators to do them to make them and so I think a lot of creators are just throwing stuff out there because uh, they're trying to get bonuses on YouTube uh, so you know it's not a bad thing to put shorts out there but you know I still feel like if you're gonna put out shorts content it should still be it should still provide value you know because like there's a difference between making a short content and just being like a person that's just like filming their food or their day or whatever and actually um, I've been hearing a lot lately from some of the um, like channels that talks about how to like grow as a creator and they're all saying that vlogs are dead like vlog style like just people showing their day is kind of like going downhill because people are people are sick they're kind of like bored of it because you know it's just like you're just watching somebody just going throughout their day and you can only do so many like uh, over the top things and I think people are just like okay we've seen you open your mail before we've seen you you know cook a hamburger before we've seen you uh, you know walk down the street with your dog and at a certain point people just get kind of sick of it and so um, they're saying that if you're gonna do vlog styles you need to provide something to the audience like something of value education teach somebody something give them tips let them know how they can save money let them know how they can make money let them know how they can get products for less or you know provide something for people and don't just think you're gonna be able to show your pizza and people will be like oh let me keep watching although I love pizza and I haven't had pizza in a while so that would be great if I had pizza um, stay tuned when posted with a barrage of negative I asked what would he do yes indeed yes indeed I'm 67 and when we were bored. We went outside to play. We don't know the long-term effects of cell phone scrolling we'll have on our kids. Agreed. I was just having this talk with my mom the other day of just like um, how like kids don't even go outside anymore. Like they don't see the sun. They're you know they all have vitamin D shortages. It's just sad. Like it's it's really sad. Even when my kids were younger, like I told them to go outside and ride their bikes and stuff, and they would be like, oh, like I just want to play video games. But like I would make them go out, but now it's just even worse um, you know kids used to go out and get dirty like they'd play in the mud and the dirt and they'd you know go on adventures and they'd you know just figure out like they would use their imaginations and now they don't do it they don't use their imaginations because they don't have to because they can see every solution to every problem that you could ever imagine and things you didn't even know you wanted to know or hear about on all these platforms love your stuff but I gotta go buy groceries the cupboards are bare been eating out too much love ya love ya too thank you for being here thank you and uh, happy grocery shopping yours are always good and I'm glad you should thank you Q Margo I appreciate that Actually, I go ride horses or sit under a tree and read or do an intense study of a Bible yes and hours go by and I didn't even know it yes I actually picked up this book um, you know when you're going through like those like sometimes neighborhoods that these little teeny they're called like little libraries or whatever little mini libraries little free library and I picked this book up uh, I don't really know it's just okay um, but I'm trying to just pick up one book at a time and start getting back into reading because I used to read so much and I fell off so I'm just gonna read this book and then like uh, go to like 
you know, either a garage sale or go to like the library where they sell books for like a quarter or 20, 50 cents or whatever, or find a little free library and just like, just read different books. And I think that'll be cool. So I don't have a, like a lot of extra room for books in my van, but I'm really trying to do that as opposed to like being so much like looking on a screen. Hey Kim, I recently learned that putting my phone down and hour before bed and reading a book I sleep so much better I was spending so much time scrolling in bed going to work with no sleep yes exactly that's what I'm trying to do too during summer when the weather was beautiful my sister and I were allowed to stay in the house during the day uh, we, had, we had to be out, we had to be outside to play yes exactly exactly yeah um, I think it's important to you know get outside and not just like I've been really trying to get more vitamin D in my life, like from the sun, not just like supplements, but like if you actually go outside and get some sun, that's like gives you natural vitamin D. And so I've been really trying to just like go outside and just feel the sun and it's just been like so much better, just mood wise too. Um, all right, so let me show you guys where I'm at. There's, there's people walking around like with the little like push carts selling like ice creams, corn, um, I don't know what else, other things. Um, so let me show you guys where I'm at. Um, and then we'll play a couple games. Let me unplug this. Ah! I haven't had ice cream in so long. If you guys can believe it, I'm still eating potatoes. Um, I have incorporated some other things into my diet, like rice and beans and stuff like that. But I find that like the less choice I have, the better I do. I still have not resumed coffee, um, which is a shocker to me, but I'm really, really trying to like maintain my health and like lose a lot more weight. Um, and I feel pretty good. My skin is still soft and I've been using this like um, serum and cream to like get rid of some of my brown spots and rosacea. I'm really trying to like look a lot better like as I age because you know, I with all these other things van life and just trying to get like acquainted with van life it's a challenge and so you know like looking beautiful was not my top priority and so now that I've been doing van life for a while I'm trying to you know like spruce it up a little bit you know what I'm saying you never know I might walk into a grocery store and meet my husband you just like don't even know let me hold on let me get this Oh my gosh, Crystal Rio sent me $20 for add to the Simon Fund. Oh, that is so sweet and so cute. Thank you so much, Crystal. I appreciate that very much. Crystal's also one of my Patreon supporters as well, so I appreciate this doubly as much. So I love it. Thank you so much. Let's give you, let's give you, let's give you a victory shout. Also, um, Crystal was the winner of um, when we did our 50K um, celebration, Snack Stravaganza. Um, Crystal is the one that won um, like our little top prize, which was one item from my merch store, which if you guys didn't know, I have merch. Um, I have t-shirts, tank tops, um, water bottles, and stickers. And you can find the links under any of my videos. But anyways, she's she won any item of her choice and she chose the water bottle which I don't even have that water bottle so she sent me a picture of it but she actually did something even better she made a video on her um, TikTok and YouTube and it's so cute um, and you guys got to go check it out so if Crystal if you want to post your link to your channel or TikTok or whatever now that we're talking about TikToks um, it was just a cute thing just to show off the water bottle and I just think it's so cute um, so thank you for that and thank you for the donation as well I really appreciate it um, all right hold on let me read these comments and then we're gonna go look outside uh, potatoes blah I know hey Brenda how are you glad you're here hope says now I want ice cream exactly hey Tina's the outsider how are you 
Patrick from Southern California, my phone turned me into a shut-in. I mean, it's easy to do, Patrick. I mean, I'm not kidding. There's so much stuff on there. Um, uh, thank you, Glenda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to turn off my phone one to two hours before bed. I have found a slow walk with my Papillion works the best. You know what? That's actually the best. What I've even seen on articles and stuff like that is to try to turn off your phone oh, at least one hour before bed. So it's just, what is this car doing? I think they're trying to back into the space next to me. But they're having a real difficult time. But you're supposed to turn off your phone an hour or two before bed so that your mind can start to like chill out, calm down and like, you know, relax a little bit. So reading a book is actually a great way to relax um, or, you know, praying or even journaling something that doesn't inquire, doesn't inquire, doesn't require a screen at all. Even if it's TV, like turn off the, all the iPads, phones, TVs, anything. And bro, this car, what are you doing? Bro, do not hit my van. This person is like doing a 55 point turn and they're almost gonna hit my van. It's a van that's almost gonna hit my van. Hold on. I don't even know if they're trying to get in or get out. Like, I, I can't tell because they're... Holy mother of all. You are doing the most. There's other spots, bro. Oh, my Lord Jesus. Don't hit my hand! Oh my gosh. Oh, he just said his power steering is going out. That's not ideal. I feel for you, bro. I feel for you. Oh, oh, oh. Holy mother of all. He's in. He's in. He made it in. I was also nervous because my door is open, which I'll show you. And I didn't know if he was going to give me enough room so I can close it when I'm ready to leave. That was stressing me out. Uh, I'll show you guys in a second. Okay, let's see. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Yes, crystals. Awesome. Um, stay tuned. I'm trying to find a local person to insulate my van. I don't want to go with a professional outlet. I'd rather give the money to someone who needs it. I tried next door, but no takers. Anybody? Um, what are you trying to do for insulation? Because I insulate. Me and my dad insulated. That was like probably the easiest part for me of the van build. But I I got Havelock wool, which is like it comes in a bag. It's like sheep's wool, and it was not like the most expensive, um, but it's it was worth it. And all you do is just tear it off, like you know sheep's wool and just push it into the spots unless you're talking about like building um you know like a frame inside your van and that's a little di different um but you could also go on craigslist it's not like the most ideal and you can also go on task rabbit i don't know how involved they get on that but you can go on those places and see but if it's just insulating i mean that's not super difficult even if you go to um I think it's called Thinsulate or something like that and you go to Home Depot and buy that they're like the big sheets of like insulated board you could cut those easily with a hot knife and you can you know put it into the sections of your van so 
maybe try it yourself because that was probably one of the easiest parts. Oh, thank you again, Crystal. Um, Allison, what's your favorite color? Um, my favorite color is navy blue. Um, also, is there a PO box where I could mail you a prayer journal and make them at home? Oh my gosh, I haven't figured out a way to, to like get mail yet. Um, so at this point, I don't have a PO box. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Send me, send me. If you want to send me an um, an email or um, hit me up on Instagram, um, I can tell you like maybe. If you wanted to send it by post office, I could maybe have you send it general delivery and um, send, and I could tell you which post office to send it to in San Diego. Then we could probably do it that way. Um, that's probably the easiest. Thank you, Grant, for posting those links. Um, yes, check out Crystal and the Gringas on YouTube. I need to get one of those water bottles. Yeah, the water bottles are awesome. Yeah, they're awesome. I don't personally have one, but I'm saying that just the look of it, when Crystal showed it to me, I was like, ooh, that's so cute. The only reason I'm not getting one is I love this, so I think what I'm going to do is just put one of my stickers on here, because I love this water bottle um, that I got, because it's a little bit bigger. Hey, Dory, how are you? Uh, okay, I would love to completely turn off my phone and even but I have a teenager so I just turn off like, oh that's smart turning off notifications um backseat drivers yeah crystal oh, yes uh, back one turn you crack me up I seriously hope she does it uh yeah who needs to park that close he didn't actually end up parking that close but the, he was like this close to hitting my van <sighs> yes that was right now okay that was stressful waiting to see if he was gonna hit you I know I was stressed out I also did the Havelock Bowl in my van. Oh, yes, okay. Does my van burn oil? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I got the wool, um, if you go to Havelock, H-A-V-L-O-C-K, I think it is, Havelock Wool, it's, go to their website and they're great. Yeah, I have the Havelock Wool on all my walls and ceiling. I didn't do the floor. Um, okay, awesome. Yes, try to do it yourself because it wasn't that hard. Okay, I don't have Instagram, but here is my email address. If you're able, me and Sugar Shadow will get Okay, awesome. Um, if Grant, if you can post my email address so that Maddie will have it, and then Maddie, you could just email me um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm just going to turn the camera around and then I'm just going to show you where I'm at. Okay, so this was, I'm just going to whisper, this was the guy that was trying to get next to me. So it's at the bay and let me just put my shoes on because it's hot on my feet. And also in the meantime, while I'm putting my shoes on, I found this $10 bill on the ground when I was going to get my hair done and it was all crumpled up and I thought that maybe there was drugs on it. So I came here and I washed it off with soap and water. And so that's why I have a drying $10 bill. <laughs> okay, let's go outside sure my dress isn't pulled up. Whoa. Alright, so here, I don't know what this is actually called, but like, I think it's like Mission, I don't think it's Mission Bay, I don't know where I'm at. But, it's got a, I think you can rent jet skis and stuff where people bring them in their boats. And then there's like, you know, freeway or whatever. And then there's lots of people that have already their own boats. And then if you look right there, that's SeaWorld over there with all those roller coasters. SeaWorld. And this thing right here, they light this up with lights at night and it looks like a Christmas tree. And then there's like lots of people out here just like fishing and hanging out. And then you got people with their big sprinter vans and stuff. Like look how tall that is. I found my friend. So, and 
and then, you know, there's nowhere for you to, like, basically sit because it's just all rocks. But it's really beautiful and very peaceful. And there's, like, let's see, I don't think I can show you, but there's, like, this place goes down for a long time. And you can, there's lots of places to park over here. So if you came and wanted to do, like, a barbecue or something, you actually could. I usually just come and park like on this first line. And and it's just really cool because when I'm sitting in let's see, I don't think you could see it. Let's see. Let me go back here. So when I'm sitting on my bed, so this is the level that I'm sitting on my bed, and so I could just, you know, just look out that and just kind of sit here and do my work or whatever and just see people having a nice time and the weather is pretty nice I do have my max air fan going and I do have this fan going so it's actually nice and cool though I think it's like 80 let's see actually I don't know what the temperature is let me see I think earlier it said 85 but I think that was inside my van, so let's see what's the weather here. Yeah, it's actually 79 right now. Um, so, it's pretty nice. Um, okay, thank you Grant for posting that, my email address. Um, do you have an Amazon list so people can buy you things you need? Um, Dory, I do have an Amazon list. Um, I don't even know how to... Maybe there's a link. Ah! Maybe there's a link to it. Um, that's a good point. I don't know if I have a link to that. so many things on Amazon. Um, yeah, I'll have to get it maybe next time because I don't, I don't know how to get the, li the link to it. Um, but basically if I do, like, if I give a link out, then anything that, if anyone wants to buy, we did this when, when we did a van warming party. And all the stuff would just go to my parents' house, and then when I go back to visit them, um, then I would just get it. And actually, I'm going to my cousin's wedding in a couple weeks, and if anybody sends something, that my parents could just bring it to me. So, I mean, that would be okay, too. Um, so, yeah, maybe in the li next live stream, I can post the link for my Amazon. Hands down. Hang dry the money. Love it. Pretty smart. A very pretty area yes it's so pretty here most hundred dollar bills have drugs on them this is only a ten dollar bill it, it was just all crumpled up and it was like kind of in like the gutter part of the street and it's in one of those areas that's kind of known for people walking around a lot at night and it was kind of like dirty um, and I was like oh I didn't even want to pick it up so as soon as I got into the hair salon I went and washed my hands and put it in my pocket but yeah I wanted to wash it just to make sure beautiful view yes peaceful and relaxing yes it's so beautiful here I know where you are my husband and I went there it's so awesome and we were on the other side of the bridge oh awesome uh, Diane no you can't sleep here um, it's actually illegal to um, habitate in your vehicle in San Diego um, so it's all these places have signs that say something to the fact of no parking from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. and it's just like one of those things like it's just a short enough time for you to have to be inconvenienced to move so like technically I guess you could like stay until 2 a.m. on some of these places but you really wouldn't why does this person have this room?
his doors open and he's playing his iPad. So it's really loud. Um, I think I'm gonna have to close my door. Um, so no, anyways, no, you can't sleep here. You can't sleep anywhere um, in San Diego. Um, I allegedly do sleep out here though because I'm here and I find places. Um, there's some, I don't know how to describe it. There's some areas where people don't care as much if people are there. Like if you're gonna park over by like any kind of coastal like beach areas, those people care uh, because they're spending a lot of money to be there and they care, they will report you. Um, but there's other areas where you see lots of vans, lots of RVs, and those aren't the greatest areas. Like last night I slept on the street. It was in a residential neighborhood, but I parked on a street that there was homeless people there. You know, you could see their carts and their piles of clothes and stuff like that. Um, so I was like, you know, like stayed up a little extra long just to like kept looking out my windows and just make sure there's nobody like like going around my van and stuff. Um, so there are places and there's times where I do park in hotel parking lots like at 10 o'clock at night and then I leave early in the morning. Um, hotels that have free parking. Um, but it's, I'm always a little bit on edge in San Diego area and San Diego County because I know it's illegal and I know that any at any time I could be getting a knock on the van my strategy allegedly is if I do get a knock that I don't answer because if they don't see me they can't prove that I'm sleeping in there um, and because I do have friends in San Diego I mean what's to say that I didn't park my van and then just catch a lift or an uber to my friend's house and just park the van so there's ways around it also, they've really, um, law enforcement has slid off of ticketing um, vehicle dwellers. Now, that's not the same as like county and city officials that are like ticket agents, ticket, what do you call them? Um, what do you call the people that like, do the, um, like giving parking tickets and stuff, like ticketing enforcement? I don't know, street enforcement? that's totally different than law enforcement. So the ticketing people that that's job is to like give parking tickets and, and stuff like that, they will give you tickets. Law enforcement like officers have come off of that. They're not really ticketing people, maybe here and there. Like I just read an article that they are doing like very few ticketing because they're basically punishing people that have had to live in vehicles. Um, a lot of people like me are doing it by choice, but a lot of people do not have the choice. Uh, and yeah, meter maids. So a lot of people, I'm gonna close this door. Ay, ay, ay. Um, so a lot of the, um, you know, the people that, I lost my train of thought, but basically you can't sleep in San Diego. It's not, it's not allowed. And so you got to figure out ways where to park and stuff like that. And law, the law enforcement have kind of come off of it, but you're, some people are still getting ticketed. So you, you know, oh, and the other thing is like apps like iOverlander, um, or what's the other one, Campendium, um, and some of these other places that tell you places where you can like kind of boondock and stuff. Um, some guy went on there and in all these areas in San Diego that a lot of this, the van community or vehicle dwelling community went on there and said, okay, you know, I found this street to be good or I found this area to be good or whatever. Some guy went on there and he posted penal code, blah, 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 blah. It's illegal to habitate in your car. I reported, blah, blah. So he's basically like reported the app, like reported on the app that he's reported all the, the locations on those apps. Um, so there's definitely some real hateful people um, that just don't want people to be living in vehicles. They just don't. So they've basically made it very difficult for people to stay in San Diego County. So you can't stay anywhere like this and like a parking lot, even though there's hundreds of spaces, you just can't sleep here. So um, you got to have to 
like kind of go into neighborhoods and just kind of find places that are a little bit out of the way, especially more inland you go, the more opportunity there is to find spots. Um, and some of these spots aren't as desirable, obviously, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Especially now that I have to wait on these repairs, I have to be in this area, so I have to figure, I have to figure it out. Um, that would be awesome to sleep there. It would be so awesome. I usually stay here until about 10 at night and then I go find a place. Um, and every night, I believe at 10, they have fireworks at SeaWorld. So every night there's fireworks right across the water right here. And so it's pretty awesome. So you get fireworks every night. Hey, Dave W. This is in San Diego, California. The sound of the ocean is lulling me to sleep. Yes. It's a comfy 77. Awesome. Cool. It's 71. Oh, 100 in Phoenix. Hey, Monique from Anaheim. I've water skied there. Oh, awesome. It's very detoxified to sit and watch all the skiers. I miss the weather and the water in San Diego. Yes, it is actually really nice. We are having a cool snap. Yes. Awesome. Element van life. Something in San Diego. Hey, Natalie from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. I love your channel. Thanks for all the good tips. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I hear parts of Washington State camping gear in your vehicle is illegal. What's going on? Like, I cannot. Like, there's definitely, there's definitely a war on nomads' lifestyle, for sure. Like, a lot of states and, and counties are definitely outlawing like sleeping like even at rest stops you can sleep there but you can't sleep there at night kind of defeats the purpose of a rest stop um but yeah there's lots of junk going on where they're like banning people from doing these kinds of things um what happens when the police knock do they announce the other place yes so it's only happened to me one time um allegedly i'm gonna keep saying that um they knocked loudly show they were flashing their flashlight through all my windows trying to see in and they said sheriff's department, sheriff's department, and I just didn't answer. And then they drove away after a few minutes, and then I drove away after they left. Because obviously if somebody called the cops, they're gonna be paranoid, and I'm gonna be paranoid that they're gonna come back. So if you get the knock, you might as well just, just leave. I've gotten the knock from sheriff's department, and I've also gotten knocks from um, neighbor, like just people in the neighborhood being ding holes. Um, I can't stand haters on high horses reporting people that are not even doing anything more. I mean, it chaps my high, Patrick, so much, so much, because it's like, I know that, I know that there's like definitely people that ruin it in van life that, you know, there are some people that are littering and being loud and stuff like that. But the majority of us out here are super quiet, super, um, considerate of where we park. Like we don't park in front of anyone's house or driveway I usually park next to a wall um, or a fence or something like that so there's really no need to, to get like a call but some people are just literally literally hateful they just do not want to look at a van they just don't want to look at a, any vehicle that's like doesn't look nice or doesn't fit in with what they want to see um, and it really just like it's it just really grinds my gears um, uh, I still haven't gotten a surgery date, so I don't know yet, but I think it's going to be in October. It's 90 in Central Valley and not too bad today. That's not as bad. 102 in Oklahoma. Holy. Hey, Janice. Glad you're here. All right. So, um, let's play a couple. Let's just pay, play two questions of, will we press the button? And hold on a second. Will you press the button? Um, and so, hold on a second. It's getting ads on here. What the heck? Okay, so what this game is, is um, basically we get to, we're asked to kind of, well, it's a question, but it's like a, 
this will happen, but this will happen. And then we collectively get to decide if we will press this button. So we're going to do two of them, and then we're going to wrap it up for, the, for today. But I appreciate you guys being here before we get on these games. I really do appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate all the love and support and prayers. Um, it really does mean a lot to me to get, um, you know, to get, like, or just to have the knowledge that there's so many people out there praying for me and my situation of, you know, getting the van fixed and stuff like that. And I really do just appreciate it so much, all the encouragement and love and all just like the words of like, you know, you'll get through this. It's going to be okay. I'm praying for you. It really does mean a lot to me. Like it really does. And I, I really much, very much appreciate all the love. So thank you for that for sure. Um, I do appreciate the donations for helping with that as well. Totally appreciate it. And it's, it is a real big blessing for me. Um, and I appreciate, you know, you guys just being around, just, just being here on the channel. It really means a lot to me to have such a great community of snack pack friends. Um, so I want to say that before we get into the games because usually at the end people are, you know, jumping off. So I want to just say that now. Um, and before we end today, um, before we go into the games, if you do have a YouTube channel or TikTok or something that you're trying to um, get people to support, go ahead and post it now. Because I'd like to like make sure that you guys get a minute to your, you know to be able to like showcase what you do. Um, so if you guys have a YouTube channel or something that you're trying to to get, jump off with, um, feel free to post it now. And if anyone's watching and wants to check it out, then feel free to to find some new content. Um, all right, so let me read these comments and then we'll jump into the game. Hey, CM, new follower here. Oh, awesome! Thank you. Watch a couple of your videos and see that you were living in your car, possibly somewhere cooler or more east than in Cali. Now I see you're living in a van in San Diego. Wow, yes, yes, yes. I used to live in my car and then during the pandemic I got a van. Thank you for being here and uh, well, we're welcoming to you. So come back again too. Um, hey, Kim says, those are usually people who aren't happy with their lives. And you know, it's sad because they have like the most, you know, they have like the million dollar homes. And it's like, I'm like, Bro, enjoy the beach. You live at the beach. Like, why are you worried about what I'm trying to do? Oh, thank you, Grant. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you, Patrick. Genesis, is the snacker now living in San Diego? Did I miss an announcement? Oh, no, I'm still living in my van, but I'm in San Diego as my vehicle, as my van has to get some more repairs. Oh, thank you, Q-Bargo. Oh, yeah, hit the like if you haven't already. Thank you, Daya. Oh, yes, we love you, sister. You go. Thank you, Dory. Thank you. Some days are diamonds, some days are stones. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Allison. You learned so much of van life. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. All right. Um, just trying to prep doing more car life in Corolla. Thank you for your advice before leaving to tour the country. Awesome, Dave. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Car life in the Corolla. That's awesome. You're always so sweet and kind. I also please know that you really Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, thank you, Glenda. That really means a lot to me. All right, so let me read this real quick because I read a couple of these that were inappropriate, so I'm like, I always want to make sure I read it first. Oh, what a weird question. Okay, the question is, you will be beautiful and funny, and I guess for a guy, you will be handsome and funny. I gotta get some water. Make sure you stay hydrated. <clears throat> you will be beautiful and funny, but no one can see or hear your presence. So you're basically just going to be beautiful and funny on your own. Some of these questions are dumb, right? Is anybody else like, that seems pretty, no, that seems like a no, right? I mean, I'm already beautiful and funny, so you know what I'm saying? I think all of you guys are beautiful and funny. What's, what's to determine what's beautiful and funny? We're already that, so I think we'll skip this question. That seems dumb. That seems dumb. Yeah, skip it, right? That's a dumb one. Okay, moving on. That's dumb. Especially, like, even if you choose, yeah, I want to do that, like, you're just going to be looking in the mirror, telling jokes to yourself. <laughs> that seems stupid. Okay, I didn't press the button. I didn't press the button. I moved on. 
Uh, well, for the self-indulgence, they might like. I mean, yeah, I guess. I guess. Skip it. Okay, I skipped. I skipped. I skipped. Okay, here's the next question. Okay. You win three million dollars at a lottery. Okay. Three million dollars at a lottery, but one of your hands will magically disappear. So I guess is your hand worth three million dollars? What do you guys think? Do you think we should press the button? So are we taking the three three million dollars or are we gonna keep both hands? That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah, one of your hands magically disappears. I guess there's no pain because, I mean, it doesn't say one way or another if there's pain or no pain, but one of your hands will magically disappear. That's all it says. Thanks for the thumbs up reminder. Sometimes I get so involved in what Elsa was saying that I forget that I have to go back and find the video. Oh, thank you so much. Stay tuned. See, I'm, I'm so curious how one affords to live the van life without money. I'm seriously thinking about it. We need to buy a van, but also wonder how it will make money. I've seen that people work from their... Yes. Uh, so, there, uh, there, I made a video about how you can make money, but there's lots of other videos of showing how other people make money as well. Jeff says, nah. Brenda's keeping hands. Margo's keeping hands. Maddie G and Daya are also keeping hands. Janice says, hmm, if I can keep the other one, can I negotiate for 309 mil <laughs> uh, uh, Let's see. Uh, keep my hand, keep both hands, keeping my hands. Uh, Patrick's gonna press that button. Patrick's getting that three mil. Keep my hand. Dory says, pass. Three mil doesn't seem like enough money. Nope, not willingly letting any of my limbs go. Can I buy a prosthetic with the three mil? I mean, you can, yeah, you can do whatever you want with the three mil. Can. Gotta have my hands, says Dory. Three mil. I can be Captain Hook in real life. <laughs> I mean, with the prosthetics advancement nowadays, you could get a realistic looking hand. Now, you won't have the same functionality, I don't think. Especially if your hand magically disappears. Like, do you still have your nerve endings? Like, is it like sealed off? Or is it like cut? So you could see, I don't know. It doesn't say that all that it doesn't go into that. But. I think, yeah, you could be Captain Hook. After taxes, you don't have much left. You, Tina says, you can't live in your car in San Diego, but you can pitch a tent on Fiesta Island or on a sidewalk to live there. I mean, that's, that's factuals. That's factuals. Um, keep both hands. So most people said they're going to keep their hands. So I, I would keep my hands. Three mils, uh, like I, I'm sorry. You know, I need both of my hands. I don't don't want to be um, trying to, like at my age, trying to learn how to grasp things with a hook or a prosthetic, like if I don't have to. And I don't want to take it for granted because there are people that have lost limbs. So I'm going to just like pass on that money and just like be grateful for what I got. So we're not going to press that button. So it was 45% of the people pressed the button and 55 did not. So we're in the majority. So 55% thought like us and was like, no, we're going to keep our hands. So. I think that depends on what financial status you are starting at. That's true. That's true. It's hard to wash your hands with only one. I mean, that's also true. There were articles years back about the poor in third world countries selling their kidneys. Oh my gosh. That's true. If you're starting at like, ma like massive poverty, Three mils can really set you up, and you know if you can get a prosthetic, I mean, you could, you could do it. Um, so yeah, if you were in severe poverty or like starving, and your kids were starving, you know, if you have to like take care of family members or kids or whatever, yeah, if I had to do that, I would do God do what I got to do, and I would get my hand magically disappeared, and I would get that money, and I would take care of my responsibilities. But if I'm just in the situation where I'm at, no, it's it's not it's not gonna be enough. Um, grants in the minority. I don't get loving, wait, in vans. I don't get loving in van, not, not allowed. Yet there's Tent City in downtown San Diego by Seaport Village. I know because we, church would go and bring them hamburgers and toiletries. Exactly. 
there's lots of people living in tents and walking around and <clears throat> you know I know that like lots of people don't have options but if people have access if people have access to a vehicle as opposed to a tent I personally feel that <clears throat> people should be able to like utilize what they have the resource they have is their vehicle they should be able to be more comfortable in a vehicle as opposed to sleeping on the ground or a tent I'll get on a full tangent so we're not gonna go down that road but I 100% I 100% agree with that. Like, if people have an opportunity to get out of a tent, they should. I'll pay someone to be my other hand. I mean, that's true. Makes no sense. At least van dwellers are inside their homes. I don't get it. Exactly. The average cost for an apartment in America, 1800 Exactly. Exactly. It's like so, just so pricey. So, I don't understand, but it's, I don't understand. All right, let's go to this last question. A monthly rental, yes. Okay, let's see. We already did this one, so I'm going to skip it. weird one okay you can enhance any sense you want to superhuman levels so I guess seeing hearing taste touch what's the other one smell um, but you lose one other sense of your choice so you can make one enhanced but you lose one where are we gonna push that button are we gonna push the button you can enhance so like you could have super human vision so I guess seeing through buildings or whatever but you'd have to lose one of your other senses or I guess super hearing so you could hear things all over across the world or whatever but you'd lose another one or you could I guess you wouldn't I mean you could superhumanly smell I don't know what why you'd want that uh, you could superhumanly touch I don't know what that would be I don't know if that's equal to strength. Um, yeah, I don't know. But you have to lose one of your senses. It's going to be, you can choose the one, but you have to lose your sense, one of your sense, senses. Um, a friend of mine just moved to Oklahoma and got a one bedroom in Tulsa for six fifty. dollars Skyrocketing inflation. Yes, exactly. Yeah, there's different levels depending on where you go but the average I think it is like around 1800 where like across the nation um, okay so we're getting uh, from Natalie uh, Janice Q Margo nope Adori says I suppose if I was seriously and like 15 years old maybe but over 50 and have to learn all the physical things again the insurance wouldn't cover enough I'd be able to double flip people I would be able to double flip people off uh, yes push the eyes good eyes no smell all right, Rebecca's going to go with yes. Um, supersonic eyes and no smell. All right. Um, Reverend RV says, nah, don't press it. Uh, keep sight, lose smell. You know, the thing is, is ever since I had the COVIDs, um, I've like not lost my smell, but I have like, I smell weird things like cigarette smoke all the time and like, different things smell different like rotten so it really sucks but it hasn't been like the end of the world it, it does suck I'm not gonna like downplay it sucks but it hasn't been like the end of the world and if I didn't have to wear glasses if I had perfect perfect vision I think I might be able to give up smell the only thing is like even though my smell is diminished still I could still smell things and like today I went to the grocery store and they had a bakery and I could smell chocolate chip cookies and it just like was the best thing ever because I'm not eating sweets right now. And so there are things that you smell that like is nostalgic or just makes you feel good. Like just smelling certain foods or like certain people have a smell like, you know, family members or friends. This just reminds you of times of old, you know, like 
Um, so I do like to still have my sense of smell, but if I didn't have to wear reading glasses or glasses, I would probably be like really, so I don't know, but I don't think I'd want to give up my sense of smell hundred percent. Uh, Daya says no. Glenda says yes. In Oklahoma, the sounds the sounds about right for rent. Electric will take the same amount though. No. Oof. Grant says don't press it. Um, Maddie G. If I had to lose one of my senses, I would be it would be my hearing because the garbage I'm hearing these days is so ungodly. Plus, I know sign language. Oh yes, it is ungodly. And yes, sign language is a great thing. Brenda says no. Stay tuned. I know someone in an undesirable neighborhood in Seattle renting 150 square feet for a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Um, smell. Crystal says nope. God gave us each one of their senses for a reason, so I'll keep all my senses. Good point. Good point. I'd rather lose a hand for the three mil than lose a sense. Oh dang. Um, Mira says. Mira Design says yes. Without smell, food isn't going to taste good. I mean, that's probably true. There's a theme with these questions. Would you trade an advantage for disadvantage? Yes, exactly. Um, 150 square feet is a closet apartment. I think this van is 60 square feet. So I understand that the smallness of 150 square feet is pretty small. Um, so yeah, that is pretty small for a thousand dollars. No, better to keep and use what you have. That's a good point. Patrick, sight, touch, taste, smell, and hearing are amazing. I would not want to completely lose one of them, but I can live with one hand. Good point. Uh, I wonder who comes up with these questions. I think people submit these questions maybe because some of them are weird. Um, you're right on the smells, yes. Hey, Cheryl T, how are you? That's my thought, Glenda. I lose weight pretty quick. I mean, that's true. Jeff, I'll keep what I have. I keep what the good Lord gave me and be happy. Yes, indeed. Deb G, growing up on the carnival, we slept a lot of places due to breakdowns, accidents, no cell phones. In Hazard, Kentucky, in 1979, we we never slept in tents or on the ground for health and safety reasons. Good point. Good point. Janice says one more question. Okay, so you guys want one more question? I like your advice with this. Okay, so we're not going to press this button, okay? Because a lot of us um, said we're not going to we're going to keep what we got. So I agree with you guys on this. Okay, so I will not press the button. Okay, so, ooh, 63% pressed the button. And only 37% did not press the button. So I guess more people wanted superhuman levels. That's crazy. I'm with you guys. I'd rather just keep what I have and deal with it. All right, okay, we'll do one more. Uh, sorry, Grant, because I think Grant wants to go eat. <laughs> But we'll do one more. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think people submit these because there's some weird ones about things I don't know about. Okay, here's here's one. <laughs> Grant with this with this food bowl. Um. Okay, so here's the question. There is a zombie apocalypse and you survive with all the best weapons in the world, but you have absolutely no ammo at all. I mean, that doesn't actually make sense. Like, I don't even understand that question. What are we pressing the button for then? There is a zombie apocalypse and you survive with all the best weapons in the world, but you have no ammo in the world. So so I guess the alternative is that you die. I mean, obviously I want to live. So, I mean, in this case, if the alternative is dying, I guess I would choose life and just, I guess if I had an like awesome gun, but no ammo, I could just, just use the butt of the gun to like smash the zombies face in or brain in I mean a knife a knife doesn't need ammo so I think we're gonna skip this one because it's stupid confused not everyone takes it not everybody I guess you're but goodbye yeah use bladed weapons right another question I guess I live and beat the crap out of the zombie yeah that's what I'm saying okay we're gonna skip this one that's a dumb some of these are dumb 
Okay, this is an interesting one. This is a chainsaw, yes. The chainsaw, that would be, hey, you start whoosh, slicing zombies' heads off. Have you tried casinos for camping? I'm doing that right. Yes, I have I have been to two different casinos. Um, not like camping, but you know, to sleep overnight. Um, and I had no problems with it. So casinos, but a lot of casinos have underground parking and sometimes the clearance isn't high enough. So that's the only downfall to that. But other than that, uh, yeah, casinos are a hit for sleeping. Um, pass. Maybe 12 year olds do some experience. I stayed at a casino parking lot once. It was nice and safe. Yes. 20 to fill it up. I love that they patrolled zombies. I would take, I would take heaven. Another question. <laughs> yes. I saw chainsaw today to trim trees. You're ready, Dory. Viejas Casino and Alpine, not too far from. Oh, interesting. I haven't even actually forgot about casinos. So this is good that you guys are bringing this up. So I might actually check that out. I'm trying not to go too far because of the gas situation, but I'll see because I'm not sure where I'm sleeping tonight. Okay, so here's an interesting one. Watch out, zombies. Yes, watch out, zombies. You're getting chainsawed. Okay, here's the question. You get one trillion dollars. A trillion. I mean, you'd never, I mean, the, it's just the most money. You'd get one trillion dollars, but you need to fake your own death. So nobody would know you're alive. I wonder if this includes like you fake your own death, but like, can you tell your family? Like, can you, can they be in on it? So they can like cry and pretend that I'm dead, but they would be like, okay, like they would know that I'm okay. Because otherwise, no. If I had to fake my own death and just be by myself and like never be around anybody, then the answer is no. But if I could fake my own death and a handful of people could know, heck yeah, a trillion dollars, shoot. Shoot, I would get like, I don't even know what I would do, but I'm not going to say I'd get like a total facelift and stuff because I like myself and I don't want to like change into a different person but shoot I would fake my own death I don't need to be popular I don't care trillion dollars shoot that's something I would do Verona Casino also in Alpine ooh awesome San Diego City installed a porta potty on the sidewalk and solar panels downtown so people living in tents can charge their phone Yes, and actually I was at Pacific Beach the other day and they have hand washing stations and porta potties next to the library. And I thought that was really nice um, that you could, people could like wash their face, wash their hands and go to the bathroom and not like poop on the street. So I thought that was great, but also, you know, we still can't live in vehicles. So that's dumb. I'd be scared of anyone with a chainsaw. I mean, not me too. Now we were talking my kind of money. Yes. <laughs> I already have ammo for what I have. Yeah, I'd keep all knives. Treasure Island Casino in Welsh, Minnesota. Awesome. I think I could do that, said Milo New Adventure. Mountain Wanderer. Too traumatic for loved ones, but then that's a lot of money. Nah. Grant's like, show me the money. Natalie, I'll fake my own death. Milo, if the family could be there, that would be all right. Maddie G. Oh no, my siblings would be devastated if I would fake my own death. All my siblings are much older than me. Oh no. No, I can't put friends and family through that. Let my death just come. I need to help many before I go. Amen. No, my family is worth more money than all the money in the world. No, I have no siblings who could work for me, Jana says. I agree totally with you, Allison, on that question. Crystal says, with my family, it's all good, but not if I have to leave them all behind. It would be like I was dead for reals. Yes. Nope, would not leave my son and granddaughter. That's easy. I just pay Tom Cruise and the state defense handle it whilst being still able to see my family secret island i love dory's solution to this never go into porta potty in 100 degree weather oh man that's a tr no truer statement has ever been said janice some parts of la are strewn with broken down rvs that are literally disintegrating on the streets that's true even in san diego 
there's sections that I see RVs just like falling apart, parts just like fall, falling on the ground. Um, uh, Key Margo says, nope. So I'm going to say I'm taking the trillion dollars if I can do what Dory says. Like if I can like choose a handful of people, you know, if they get like, if they give you like, like, okay, you can tell five people or 10 people, uh, and then that's it. Like, I think they have to be less than 10 because if word got out then you have to lose your money. But if I could tell like my closest family and friends, I would fake my own death because a trillion dollars. And then I could do a lot of good things with a trillion dollars. It doesn't have to be in my name. It could be anonymous. You know, I could do so many good things. Like I could take care of so many people and like do so many things. We could just like start working on this homeless problem and like build parking lots for people that want to live in vehicles and people that don't want to live in vehicles could get a house. Oh, trillion dollars. You could do a whole lot of stuff. So I would do it, but not if I have to like, not if my family has to believe I'm dead. So I don't know how to, to if we're going to press this button or not. And of course, all the waste is just being dumped in the streets. Yes. After several anonymous multi-million dollar donations to my family members, they get over my loss. I'm sure. I mean, that's a good point. That's a good point. San Francisco is also bad. Yes. This question would totally work for me. Totally fake it, says Patrick. Love the city, but it really is dirty all over. That's true. Me too, Grant. I wouldn't take multi. It wouldn't take multi-millions. People are going to do anything for a trillion. Red Fox asked a lady, would you fool around for a trillion? She said, yes. He said, how about five? She said, who do you think I am? He said, we all, he said, we all, he said, we already determined that. Oh, burn, burn, burn. I love my son and daughters too much than my granddaughters is my life right now. Yes. Oh yeah. Like my sons and my mom and dad and my sister and friends, there's no way I would fake my, they would be so sad and like, I would be sad and I, would not be able, I wouldn't want to live life if I don't have my close people. A trillion dollars could buy a lot of the government. It's a good point. I haven't bought toilet paper or cleaned a shower in years. Hey, hey. Um, all right, so we're not gonna, let's see, you could, we're gonna press the button. We're gonna press this button, so we're gonna get a trillion dollars, okay? What if a trillion dollars just fell in my van? Listen, if I disappear off the internet and like it's just magically within the next week or two that I just it said I died then I probably didn't die and I'm probably enjoying a trillion dollars and hopefully you guys will just like continue to keep trout snacks in your heart but also if I get a trillion dollars I'm gonna take it okay so if I press this button right now and a trillion dollars falls in here that might be what happened Ooh, okay, 77% of the people did press that button just like we did, and 23% did not. So more people wanted to press that button. So we were in the majority. Um, if you fake your own death, God would not like that, but the devil would. Oh, that, no, now I am convicted. Now I feel bad. Okay, remember you have my address. <laughs> If you just magically get some money, then you guys will know. I had crickets in China. Is that the same? Mm. Maybe. Would be nice to help a lot of people with that. Would be nice. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If I know it'd be like wrong to fake your death, but also the good you could do with a trillion dollars. That is a moral dilemma if I ever heard one. Because, I mean, realistically, I could track down every subscriber on Trout for a trillion dollars. I could track down everyone that's ever subscribed. I could somehow, like, you know, make them give me all the information from Google and just magically, not magically, but like, I would be able to send every subscriber money. Because if you have a trillion dollars, you can talk people into doing things like giving out privacy stuff. 
and I would just get everybody's address and I would send something and then you guys would know it came from Travel Snacks. And then you would just be like, rest in peace, like that. Like you'd know, you'd know, because you would just have got some money. So that's what I would do. Oh, speaking of ranch dressing, I made homemade vegan ranch dressing. Who am I? I don't know. Um, I made it with um, uh, almond milk yogurt. Sounds disgusting. But if you just get like a non-dairy yogurt and you just mix in like seasonings, like um, like onion powder, blah, blah, whatever, dill, um, I forget what else, some other things. And I just mix it up and... You know, it's not like Hidden Valley Ranch, but it's ranchy enough. And so I've been, instead of having just like straight vinegar on salads, I've been able to just like mix a little bit of that in and have like a ranch experience. So if you guys want a little vegan ranch, you can do that with like some non-dairy yogurt. Uh, you look really good. I hope all goes well with you. And also Simon, we'll keep you in prayers for great. Have a great week. Thank you so much, Q Margo. I appreciate that. Yes, this upcoming week, we'll know some more about the van and I'm gonna probably try to do more live streams depending on if I have my van or not. Allison, I think you would fix your van and then bless everyone and need to tell you I probably would. I probably would. I wouldn't want a messy death though. No, no, no drama. R rest in peace. Wink, wink. Yeah, exactly. You can find out where they live and show up on the doorstep and surprise them like that. That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Surprise. Uh, reciting red fox jokes means I'm old. Nah, it's all good. Uh, like Publishers Clearinghouse, Hidden Valley Ranch, don't fool with Mother Nature. <laughs> yes. I'm loving your videos. Ranch experience. Keep up the group. Thank you, Dory. Thank you. You guys are so awesome. All right. It's been a fun, fun experience today. Um, I appreciate you guys. Hold on. Let me see. Check in for real. Hold on a second. Okay. Um, Awesome. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, this was really fun um, for sharing this experience with me and for just all your love and support. Yes, uh, I'll keep praying for you guys for sure. Um, and keep praying for me with Simon, getting all the repairs that I need and any parts that I need that they just are able to be found so that I can get this chapter done, paid for, and just start trying to recoup some of this money and just move forward. Because it's just a little bit stressful, but I'm going to just be in a good mood and be happy. So uh, stay tuned for some upcoming videos, and I will talk to you guys on the next one. Bye. I love you guys. Let me read some of these comments before I close out officially. Oops, sorry. Sounds like I'm going to dip the fries in the vegan ranch. Ooh. I'm going to do that. Praying for you. It all goes well. Thank you. Thank you. No veggie ranch. Um, make a short for us. Oh, okay, uh, Crystal, I will. I bet the people who call in the van life people are Leonard Skinner haters too. <laughs> thank you, D. Jackson. Thank you, Milo. Patrick, Daya. Thank you, Brenda. Maddie G. God bless you guys. God bless and have a great rest of your weekend.